going to read some scripture with you. Uh, and for those who are just joining with us today for the first time, we have been going through a series that started us in the Old Testament, Genesis. We've, we're going chapter by chapter, basically story by story through the Bible. This year, we have been focused on 2 Samuel, looking at David's new thing. And from this new thing, from this teaching that we have from David, we are learning all the things that we can do in order to finish strong. Here's the reality. God is always doing something new. The question is whether or not we will be able to finish strong, whether or not we will be able to get everything out of the thing that God has intended, whether or not we'll finish at all is the question. And so what we wanted to do this year is look at David's new thing. He became the king. We're looking at his new thing, and we're grabbing all the wisdom that we can, story by story, as we go through the Bible. And, and this week, I want to pick up in 2 Samuel chapter 14. We've been here for a few weeks. Uh, we want to look at these key verses. I want to talk about how we deal with trouble in our life today. As we read, just consider how you deal with trouble, how you deal with conflict, how you deal with issues inside of your life. So... We get to this place where Absalom is allowed to come back. Absalom has killed his brother Amnon. He's been away for a period of time. Joab works with this lady. They come in. They try to fool David. And David ultimately says, let him come back. But he's been back for years. David is refusing. Two years. David is refusing to speak with him. So David has this issue with Absalom, this conflict with Absalom. And he refuses to address it in any way. Two years goes by. That's when we pick this story up. Then Absalom sent for Joab to ask him to intercede for him. Intercede. I want to see my daddy. I want to talk about this issue. I want to get before my father and discuss this issue, this mistake that I made. But Joab refused to come. Absalom sent for him a second time. But again, Joab refused to come. So Absalom said to his servants, go and set fire to Joab's barley field, the field next to mine. So they set his field on fire as Absalom had commanded. Got to make this plain. Absalom is an issue for David that David refuses to address. And because David refuses to meet with his son and address the issue, his son is beginning to act out. And the way that he acts out, I want you to see this. He sets Joab's field on fire. I, 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 this issue is not going away. Let's read a little bit further. Then Joab came to Absalom at his house and demanded, Why did your servant set my field on fire? And Absalom re replied, Because I wanted you to ask the king why he brought me, to, brought me from Gesher if he didn't intend to see me. Just want to make sure you guys see this. He says, why is the king not dealing with his issues? Why would he bring me all the way back here and not talk to me, not try to reconcile, not give me direction, not punish me, just bring me back here and leave me for two years? I might as well have stayed there. Let me see the king if he finds me guilty of anything, then let him kill me. So Joab told the king what Absalom has said. Then at last, David summoned Absalom, who came and bowed low before the king, and the king kissed him. Now, I want to pause there for a second. We can go forward, but I want to pause there for a second. Two years go by. David never addresses his issue. This fire happens. David has no choice but to have counsel with Absalom. But there is no record that they had any conversation at all for the next four years. They never resolve. They never talk about what happened. He kisses him. He hugs him. And he keeps it going. keeps this issue alive. Let, let's go a little bit further. After this, Absalom brought a chariot and horses. Now his issue is acting out. <laughs> and he hired 50 bodyguards to run ahead of him. He got up every morning and went out to the gate of the city. When people brought a case... To the king for judgment, Absalom would ask where in Israel they were from, and they would tell him their tribe. Then Absalom would say, you really, have a, uh, uh, you really got a strong case here. 
It's too bad the king doesn't have anyone to hear it. I wish I were the judge. Then everyone could bring their cases to me for judgment. And I would give them justice. When people tried to bow before him, Absalom wouldn't let them. Instead, he took them by the hand and he kissed them. Absalom did this with everyone who came to the king for judgment. And so he stole the hearts. I want you guys to see what's happening. The issue that David hasn't, get, hasn't addressed is now pushing people away from him, is now causing separation, is now taken away from his character and his power. He said he stole the hearts of all the people of, of Israel. After four years, four years, Absalom said to the king, let me go to, he to Hebron to offer a sacrifice to the Lord and fulfill a vow I made to him. For while your servant was at Geshur in Aram, I promised to sacrifice to the Lord in Hebron if he would bring me back to Jerusalem. All right. The king told him, go and fulfill your vow. So Absalom went to Hebron, <clears throat> but while he was there, he sent secret messengers to all the tribes of Israel to stir up a rebellion against the king, against his dad. As soon as you hear the ram's horn, his message read, you are to say Absalom has been crowned king in Hebron. He took 200 men from Jerusalem with him as guests, but they knew nothing of his intentions. While Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent for a fib uh, uh, well, wait. Ahithophel, Ahithophel, one of David's counselors who lived in Gilo. Soon many others also joined Absalom and the conspiracy gained Momentum. Read a little bit more. A messenger soon arrived in Jerusalem to tell David, all Israel has joined Absalom in conspiracy against you. Then we must flee at once or it will be too late. David urged his men, hurry. If we get out of the city before Absalom arrives, both we and the city of Jerusalem will be spared from disaster. Father God, we come to you now in the name of your son, Yeshua the Christ, the living God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his sacrifice. We're praying today, God, that you would open our hearts, open our eyes, open our minds to receive a word on how we're supposed to deal with the trouble in our life. Lord, the promise that you make to us is that in this world, we will have some trouble. And it really comes down to how we manage the trouble, how we deal with the trouble in our life. And so, God, it is my prayer that you would show areas of our life where we have not properly dealt with the trouble in our life. And not just show it to us, but give us the power, God, the strength, the wisdom to be able to act on it in faith, to be able to address the issues that we have not addressed in our life, and to turn our life and no matter what, God, do not let issues ruin our new thing. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To God be the glory. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me have one of those blue mints, please. We're going to be all right, guys. I should have saved a little voice. Amen. I want to talk with you guys from <clears throat> the topic of dealing with trouble. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the adage, get your head out the sand. There's some history behind that adage. When people went to Africa for the first time, they observed Lions walking around, they observed ostriches with their head literally in the ground. And what they thought was when the ostrich heard the roar of the lion, that its defense mechanism, at least it thought its defense mechanism, was to literally 
put his head in the ground to hide from the lion. As if the lion would not see <laughs> the ostrich anymore. Now, now, this is a myth. It's not true. But actually, underneath the ground is our eggs, and the, and the ostrich is actually doing some flipping of the eggs, and this is what they saw. But, but this adage is something that we do all the time, that inside of our lives, there are issues that happen. There are lions that will roar. There are things that will happen inside of our lives. And instead of dealing with those things, many times, many times, We'll literally put our head in the sand as if the issue is just going to go away. We, we don't, many times, we just don't want to deal with the issues that are going on inside of our life. So what we'll do is very similar. This is ridiculous to believe that this ostrich will be safe from a lion. Matter of fact, this ostrich is going to be in more danger by putting his head in the ground instead of defending himself or running as fast as he can. By putting his head in the ground, the situation, the roaring lion, the thing that is getting ready to hurt him, getting ready to attack him, is only going to get worse. And what Yeshua says to us, I want you guys to see this in John chapter 16. He says that in this world, you will have roaring lions. You will have situations, issues. You will have trouble. He says in this world, you will have trouble. Trouble is going to happen. Let me make this plain. In your marriage, trouble, issues, concerns, they are going to show up from time to time. It's single people inside of your life. In your finances, all people, raising kids, there are going to be situations where you encounter trouble, where things are going to be difficult, where there are going to be issues that pop up, conflicts that pop up inside of your life. But this is what the Bible says. We cannot put our head in the sand. That when we run into trouble in this world, this is Yeshua, this is Jesus talking to us. In this world, you are absolutely positively, I look this word up, will. This word will means absolutely. Like there is, there is no exception. If you are a student and you are in college, at some point, you are going to encounter some trouble. But, this is what I need you to do. I need you to take heart. I need you to never put your head in the sand. I need you to never act like it didn't happen. I need you to never get to this place when the lion roars inside of your life where you decide that, listen, I'm going to hide out. I'm not going to address. I'm going to pretend that this is not happening. I'm going to put my head in the sand and allow for this thing to pass because here's the reality. If you put your head in the sand, it's just going to get worse. Nothing's going to pass. Nothing, listen, by putting your head in the sand, it is absolutely no different than what happens with this ostrich. Imagine this. Imagine how silly it would be for an ostrich to actually believe that by ignoring something or pretending that it wasn't there or acting like it wasn't real and putting his head inside of the sand, that the lion would just walk by and be like, well, I wonder where that ostrich went. It was here one second and then it disappeared. And what happens inside of our lives, you got to see this, in many instances inside of our lives, we, we put our heads in the sand and we allow for the, the issues of our life. We allow for the issues of our life to take over. We get, this is us in many instances of our life. Things are happening inside of our life, and instead of dealing with the things that are happening inside of our life, this is what we do. We carry, listen, look at me, we carry a bag of sand around. And when things happen in, inside of our life, we just literally open this thing up, sand on the inside of it, and we just put our head in the sand, and we try to act as if the issues, as if the conflicts, as if the things that are happening inside of our life are not, that, that, that they're just going to go away. If we could just put our heads in the sand, if I would just ignore this issue in my marriage, if I would just ignore this issue with my child, if I would just ignore this issue at work, it'll just go away. If I would just ignore it, and listen, an issue at home, an issue at work, an issue with children, an issue with family will never just go away. But what happens? While we're carrying this bag of sand around and constantly putting our head inside of it and believing that the issues of our life are going to go away, the things of our life, the situations in our life, the relationships in our life are falling apart. Because when it comes to issues, 
We have two ways to handle issues. Let's go back to that, that John verse. We have two ways to handle issues. We can handle issues in our life constructively. This is science. I'm talking science to you now. We can handle issues in our life constructively, which means what Yeshua says, to take heart, to get to this place where you turn him. He says, take heart. I've already overcome the issue that you have, the thing that's bothering you. Don't carry around the sand and keep putting your head in the sand. But this is what you need to understand. Come to me first. I've already overcome whatever issue that you have going on inside of your life. I've already, my blood has already covered that issue. You don't trust me. There are plenty of testimonies for the issue that you have of how God has transformed people. He says to take heart. This literally means to get to this place where you are alert, where you are watching out, where you're looking for your issues. And when your issues come up, you actually do something about them. Instead of putting your head in the sand, you stand firm and you stand and you trust your faith and you're strong in your faith and you get to this place where you're doing the constructive things to get through issues because the destructive things, they always end badly. And see, I don't have to preach you to this to you because many of us have been around long enough to know that when we do not address the issues inside of a relationship, the relationship just doesn't get better over time. It gets worse. When we don't address issues at work, work doesn't get better. That person doesn't, that, that person doesn't get fired. What ends up happening is one day you come in because you haven't addressed the issue and you do something out of character and you get fired. There is a constructive way to do this, to, to be of good cheer, to, to keep your heart in the right place, to, to take courage, to have courage, to be strong, to be alert, to address issues when you see them instead of waiting on them to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And there is a destructive way to do it. And, and, and show me that picture one more time, Randy. The destructive way to do it never works. And, and listen to me. Look, you see how ridiculous this looks? This is what people in your life see. When we're dealing with an issue and people can see and they know that we're dealing with an issue. When we're dealing with an issue in a relationship and people, they see you and they know that you're dealing with this issue. When you're dealing with an issue at work or, or in your parenting or whatever the case may be, when you're dealing with a financial issue, the issue, people from the outside, this is. This is what they see. They, they see us walking around with this bag. They, they see us literally with our head in the sand. And they know, this is the thing, they know that we should be stepping up. They know that we should be doing something. They know that we should be alert. They know that we should be speaking into it. You know how they know? Because you know. When, when we look at the life of David, there are three issues that David, three conflicts in his life that David simply refuses to address. Now, we've been following David for a long time, and we've been looking at David, and we know that David started out with some personal issues. He had some sin on the inside of him. He had something going on that made him want to do something with Bathsheba that he knew know he wasn't supposed to do. And listen, he never addressed the issue. And so what did he do? He put his head in the sand with the issue. And even when he found out that Bathsheba was somebody else's wife, he, he just put his head in the sand as if he didn't even hear the people saying, hey, this is somebody else's wife. And when he, got, when he brought her in and he took her and, and he slept with her and, and, and this issue, he has this major issue going on. He never tries to fix the issue and it gets to the place where instead of fixing the issue, instead of addressing the issue, addressing the internal, the personal conflict in his life. He, he looked like that guy with his head in the ground. Can you imagine what the people who were close, Nathan, the people who were close to him, who knew what he was doing, they were like, why is your head in the ground, David? Why, why won't you get prayer? Why won't you go and do something? Why won't you sit down with somebody? Why won't you work to try to change yourself? Instead, you continue to go with your head in the sand and allow for a man to be killed allow for the nation to be torn apart. And ultimately, the reason why we are here in chapter 14 and 15 with David, listen to this. He's losing his new thing. 
He's literally fleeing his kingdom. He's literally, Absalom is about to become the king. David has lost his new thing. And it all starts with his inability to take his head out the sand and address the personal issues in his life. What, what personal issues? What, what personal conflict are you refusing to address? I'm not saying what they said and what the, I'm talking about what you know is not right. I'm talking about what makes you feel uncomfortable about yourself. I'm talking about the bad habits, the things that you're doing, the sin that you deal with. Listen, I'm not, I'm not telling you, I'm not trying to make my sin, my definition of sin be your definition of sin. What I'm talking about are the personal issues and conflicts that you struggle with and that you just keep putting your head you know it's not right you know you're hurting somebody else you know you're hurting yourself you know that this solution this issue it's not going to go away it started out as a little thing and it became a little bit more a fire was set inside of your life and it got to this place where you're about to lose you've almost lost the thing that God has given you not only does David carry this bag of sand around for him. The personal issues, I want you to see this, relationally. David is terrible at addressing the issues in relationships. He has a son, Amnon. He has a son named Amnon. And and listen to what happens. Amnon killed, literally rapes his, his, his daughter. David doesn't do anything. You know what David does? Puts his head in the sand. He doesn't say anything to Amnon. He doesn't do anything at all. And because of that, Tamar is broken. Because of the relationship with him and Tamar is broken. Because he never does anything, Amnon ultimately gets killed by Absalom. Had he just taken his head out of the sand, he would have saved his daughter. He would have, he would have been able to speak into her life. Had he just taken his head out of the sand, he would have saved Amnon. He would have reconciled the the issue between Amnon and Absalom. But because, because he never addressed the issue, he allowed his entire family to fall apart. What are the relational issues? The people that are around you. That you see issues happening inside of them. And you, you are the person that is supposed to talk, speak into their life, hold them accountable, say something to them. You call them friend. But yet still, you sit back with your head in the sand and allow for them to make one mistake after the next mistake and ruin their marriage and ruin their career and get drunk and and do all these things where they get addicted to substances and, and become alcoholics. Why? Because you saw it. But instead of being a friend, instead of being a, in a relationship with them, that's none of my business. I, you know, I, I can't say nothing to them. I have my own issues. I don't want anybody. D- David also has this societal issue. I want you to think about this for a second. David is the king of the nation. A murder has happened on his watch, and he has not done anything. An injustice has happened on his watch, and he has not said anything, done anything, held anybody accountable. And listen to me. What are the things that you watch on the news that you know, man, that's not right? What are the things that you see happening in society where you look at it and you say, that is not right. Somebody should do something. Something needs to be done about this issue. Something needs to be done to help these people. And instead of doing something, you put your head in the sand and allow for that situation, that thing that God put on your heart. It's not going to get better. That issue that God pointed to you and said, hey, you need to do something about that. That moved me in my spirit. You need to do something about it. As you put your head in the sand, it it doesn't go away. I I begin to think about this, like, why why do we carry this? Because this is heavy. This This is starting to be much for many of us. Putting your head in the sand is a heavy task for you. This is, it doesn't feel right. You're not comfortable. I'm not having fun up here preaching, switching arms. This 50-pound bag of sand, walking around the stage with it. 
Many of us, we're walking around our life with a big bag of sand, just constantly putting our head. We don't like it. It stops us from, I can't do a lot of things. I can't do anything because I can't use both hands, so I'm limited on what I can do. I'm limited on where I can go. Some places don't allow me to come in with this sand. Why in the world would I choose to walk around with sand? And, and, And this is what God began to speak to my heart. A lot of times, we choose to just put our head in the sand because we, we have shame. I, I can imagine that David had to at some point think, you know, I need to say something to my son, but who am I to say something to my son? I messed up. I, I slept with Bathsheba. Everybody in the nation knows my issues. I cannot call anybody to the carpet whatsoever. And, and sometimes for us, we see things that we need to do, things that we need to say, And because we've made some mistake in the past, you know what we do? We bury our heads in the sand and allow for the thing, the issue to continue. Not not just shame, but fear. For for some of us, you're literally scared. Like, what will happen if I do this? Like, if I address this thing with my friends, will they unfriend me? If I I say this thing to this person, what will happen? What's going to happen when I address this thing? Will will it cause some kind of backlash on me? Not, Not just fear. But a lot of times, we put our heads in the sand because we really don't believe, especially with societal things, we feel powerless. We, we don't believe that we can make a difference. So instead of even trying, instead of even putting any effort whatsoever toward trying to make a difference, we just put our heads in the sand. Sometimes we just don't care. Not, not my child. Let, let their parents deal with it. Not my wife, not my house, not my, not my business. Let, let them deal with it. Sometimes, listen to this. We're, we're afraid of hurting somebody. We're literally afraid that if I were to address that thing, and let me tell you something, in most cases, if you are addressing something, somebody is going to be offended. Somebody is going to be hurt by it, but it'll be the best hurt. Listen, some of the best hurt that have ever happened in my life was somebody saying, young man, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that. That's, that is not the way to treat a lady. That is not the way. That, don't play that kind of music loud. Don't, that is not the thing that you're supposed to do. And I was initially offended, and that seed was planted inside of my heart, and I allowed for that seed to grow, and then I began to see it for myself. Like, this is not right. Sometimes we're just overwhelmed. It, 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 here, here it is. If I say something to this person about this issue, then now all of a sudden I'm involved in it. Now all of a sudden this person is going to need to come to me and talk to me and get guidance from me and get help from me. And God forbid I may have to open my wallet for this person because since I addressed the issue, now I'm part of the solution. Some of us were just ignorant. We, we don't know what to say. We've never seen it modeled the right way. We do not know what it means to, to take heart. We don't know what it means to address the issue. We haven't seen it modeled. What we've seen all throughout our life, all around, you know, when we got issues in our economy, we just, let's just print a little bit more money. We're not going to address the issue. We're just going to print a little bit. We're going to put our head in the sand. We have issues in our house. We see it. We see parents. We grew up watching parents. We know there's an issue because... Parents talk to kids about the issues. I I know this is surprising to some of you. But kids are actually listening to you on the phone, talking about the issues. They're actually watching you. They see that you guys don't speak to each other for periods of time. They see what's going on. They are learning everything they need to learn about issue resolution by watching you molly. They understand what to do when you have issues. Oh, that's the bill collector. Don't answer. Not answering the bill collector is a learned behavior. You learned that from somebody. <laughs> don't answer that door. Don't re- no, no, no. Don't answer that door. Get down. Get down. Get. <laughs> Did they get my car? No, 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 no. Well, we another day. We gonna hide the car. They listen. Put.
putting our head in the sand is a model behavior. And most of us, we do not know what it means to actually address issues because people hide their issues. Even when people address issues, they hide it in the sand. And what has to happen inside of our lives, we have to get to this place where we just say, listen, I'm not going to be carrying this bag of sand around me. Everywhere I go, putting my head in the sand, I'm actually going to address the issues inside of my life. I'm not going to allow this stuff and whatever your list is to stop me from being a person that actually address stuff. And for every issue inside, listen, I am not going to allow this issue to ruin my reputation, to ruin my integrity, to stop me from being the person that God created me to be. I'm going to address the issue. I am not in any way going to allow this issue to break up my, my, my marriage. This issue that we have, baby, we got to sit down together or with somebody. We got to figure this thing out. I'm not going to allow for this societal thing. Jesus would not allow for the stuff that we allow to happen around us day by day by day. We need to get active. We need to be serving. We need to be doing something. And the thing that you need to do is not the thing that I need to do. It's the thing that you see. And when you see it, you think to yourself, somebody, somebody needs to do something about that. Because when we do not, look at this now, I want you to see this. When we do not address the issues, this is science. This is, this is the pastor. It matches with the Bible. I'm using biblical verses for it. But if you go up and look at dealing with conflict, dealing with issues, you'll see there is a science for this. And in this science for this, when you refuse to deal with the issues inside of your life, two cycles will occur. Either the first cycle, which is an escalation cycle, which literally means, kind of think about it like a volcano. It just builds, 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 boom. And, and for some of us, we've been in an escalation cycle where we didn't say nothing. We just, we didn't never address the issue. And then all of a sudden, now we strung out. We never addressed the issue. And then all of a sudden, now we in another relationship that we had no business being in. We never addressed the issue. And then all of a sudden, we walked into the job and we cussed everybody out. And look what's happening here in the story. Absalom is, an, this is, he never dealt, David never deals with the issue with Absalom. He never sits down with his son. He never punishes his son. Two years goes, goes by. He never says a word to his son. He has an issue and instead of addressing the issue, he literally puts his head in the sand and the issue begins to come for him. And what ends up happening is Absalom sets fire. I mean, this is what happens with our issues. You act like it's not there. As long as you pretend like it's not there, act as if it's not an issue for you. And then all of a sudden, it begins to show up. And then all of a sudden, it begins to take your money. And then all of a sudden, it begins to break up your relationship. And then all of a sudden, you see stuff happening around you, and you have no control over it because it's an escalation. It's exploded at this point. When all we had to do was just be alert. Just be paying attention. Just when we see something, when we hear the lion roar, instead of putting our head into the sand, address it. Stand firm. Be strong. Do something. The, the, the second cycle that happens is a science now. is this avoidance implosion cycle. It literally means that you get to this place where you don't address the issue and because you didn't address the issue, you and the people in your life, it begins to separate you from the people in your life. And then all of a sudden, one day, you don't know this person that you're supposed to be with. You're supposed to have this relationship with this job. You're supposed to be so close in this job. And, and all of a sudden, you have avoided so many issues that you get to this place where you implode. But one day, you know, in, in a marriage, you just, I, we don't know each other anymore. One day in a parenting relationship, never deal with issues, never said anything about the issues. And then one day, just like in this parenting relationship, it just implodes. It just all of a sudden from the inside, this isn't happening from the outside. This is Absalom and the person that he is hurting is his dad because the issue was never addressed. They get into this avoidance implosion cycle and all of a sudden, I want you guys to see this, David's kingdom is taken from him. Look what happened. He says, all Israel has joined Absalom in a conspiracy against who? You. 
then, then we must flee. David knows that we got to get out of here at once. It's too late. I have not addressed the issues of my life. There is no conversation at this point. When we get to this place with our issues, there is no easy solution for it except for it to implode and fall apart. He says, we've got to hurry. We have to get out of here if we're going to be spared from disaster. And listen to me. This is the place where the pastor is trying to exhort you to not ever get, I never want you to get to the place where this escalation or this implosion happens inside of your life. Because listen, as the pastor, it is very difficult at that point for us to get counseling together. At that point, I'm sitting in a room, implosion has happened, this avoidance thing has happened. These people have turned to third party people at this point. And now you, you actually think that this other person understands you better than the person that God put you with. And now the implosion is happening. All of a sudden, the child is now turning to another person or another adult or to a group of people. Implosion has happened. You've allowed for yourself to be so far away from the person that you love, never addressing the issue that the pastor, I can't, Humpty Dumpty is falling off the wall. And all the king's horses and all the king's men can't, once the implosion, cannot put it back together again. And what I want to do is I want to exhort you. I want you to think about the personal issue. It, it's not going to become right tomorrow. The thing that you struggle with is not going to become right tomorrow. It's not going to change. The rules are not going to conveniently change in order for your personal issue to become an acceptable thing. It is time for you to stop putting your head in the sand. It is time for you to get to the place where you address you. When you begin to talk about your anger issues or your lust issues or whatever your case. I, listen, I don't want to sit here and list a whole bunch of sins because I'll list 10 of them and they won't be the one that you need and you'll walk out of here vindicated. But, but you know your issue. And, and the people around you, they know your issue. And even if they haven't said anything directly to you about it, if you were to sit down and think about the conversations and what's going on around and, and what people are saying, people know your issue. It is time for you to address your personal issue. Listen, I do not want to see another marriage fall apart, another relationship, another love relationship. God's putting two people together. Listen, on my watch, I do not want to see another divorce. But it's going to require for two people to decide we're no longer sweeping this under the rug. We're no longer uh, turning the blind eye. You know, we use all these expressions. We're no longer going to ignore, put on our clothes and go out and pretend. But what we're going to do as a couple, we are going to do everything we can before the Lord to fix our issues in our marriage. I don't want to see another, listen to me, another child separated from his parents because issues are being hidden. You want to address the issues? Kid is floundering, don't, don't know what to do. And, you know, listen to me, just because you address the issue doesn't mean the kid is going to do what you're supposed to do. Your responsibility is to address the issue. Your child, your mate, the people at work, they need to understand where you stand on issues. And wherever issues are present, it is your responsibility as a Christian. Now, now listen to me. You're not a Christian? Check out on this part. You have no responsibility at whatsoever. Do, live, if you believe that you can live life and never address issues, have fun. Have at it. But if you are a Christian, if you are a Christian, If you are a Christian, you, you have to put down every sandbag that you have. And it is time for you to live like Christ has called you to live. I'm not talking about no religion and trying to tell you, giving you a list of things or commandments that you have to do. What I'm saying to you is you know what God said to you. You know who God created you to be. You know what God is saying is right and is wrong inside of your life. And it's time for you to deal with your issues. How do we deal with the issues?
This is how you deal with them. You, you don't put your head in the sand anymore. In this world, you are absolutely, positively going to have issues. You, listen, stop acting like you don't have issues. Stop thinking that issues once you get saved and once you give and once, once you save your money, no longer going to have a money issue anymore. That's not true. In this world, you're going to have some issues. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be troubles inside of this world. But what Peter begins to do, we're picking up these Peter verses from last week. What Peter begins to do is he begins to tell us what we're supposed to do when the lion roars, when the lion comes in. The ostrich puts his head in the sand. That's not what we're supposed to do. What we're supposed to do is these things that Peter is telling us to do. The first thing he tells us to do in verse 7, he says, give all your issues, your worries, your cares, the conflict in your life. The things that you used to pick up the sandbag and, and pop your head in and act like it wasn't happened. What he says is, do not put your head in the sand anymore. This is what I want you to do. I want you to give every issue that you have, every conflict that you have. I need you to give it to Elohim. I need you to give. I looked up this word, all. It means literally every issue. I don't care how nasty, how dirty, how shameful, how upsetting the issue is. I don't care what you did, what they did to you. Every single issue. This word, all, means all issues. The first thing that we're supposed to do, not put our head in the sand, but give it, give it to God. Don't, don't give it to your friends. Don't go telling. Sometimes we go telling our business to the wrong people. And all that do is create more shame and more hurt and more pain. And it make us put our head in the sand more and more and more. And the issue never, listen, don't talk about your issues with anybody that can't help you with your issues. He says, this is what I want you to do with your issues. I want you actually to come and talk to me. Stop doing this. Now I lay me down to sleep. Uh, Christianity. Now I lay me down to sleep. God, I'm, thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. God, I'm struggling in this area. I've been coming before you and I've been asking you to help me and I'm still struggling. I still got this issue going on. I'm struck. My marriage is falling apart and I need you, Elohim. And, and this is the promise that Peter gives us. We go to him because he actually cares about us. He, he didn't intend a life for you to be walking around with a sandbag, with your head in the sand, dealing with stuff that you have no business dealing with, living a life that is below what God intended for you. God has a plan for you. He has a future for you, and he has a hope for you. It is not without issues. It is not without struggles. It is not without problems. It is not without trouble. It is not without conflict, but it is a future. It is a hope for you. It is a good thing. And if you address the issues, and God will do his part. Because he, he cares about you. And, and then Peter goes forward. Now, now he begins to say, I want you to give it to God. If you have an issue, I want you to give it to God and I want you to stay alert no matter what's going on. Do not put your head in the sand. I need you alert. I need you looking around. I need you paying attention to what's going on with your wife and your husband. I need you paying attention to what's going on in your finances. We're not going to just use the car, use the car, use the car, use the car, and then, you know, just kind of hope. That's not a strategy. Putting your head in the sand when it comes to your finances, you need a budget. You need, to you need to stay alert. You need to be watchful. You need to take time. You need to go to a class. You need to go, maybe go to Dave Ramsey class. You need to understand your finances with your children. You need to raise your children. Don't just let them be brought up by themselves. The iPad is not a parent. It's not. I, I need you to be alert. That's what an ostrich needs to do. It needs to be looking around. A lion shouldn't get close enough to you to roar and scare. You need to be moving when you see that lion coming. You need to get to this place where you watch out for your great enemy. You need to understand that there is a force out there that does not want you to get the thing that God. He does not want you married. He does not want you to be the man that God created you to be. He does not want you to get to the place that God has intended for you. He is a great enemy. It's the devil. And this is what he's doing. I want you to see this. He's prowling around like a what? A roaring lion. And the question is, when he roars, when the issues show up, 
When the conflict shows up, when the challenges show up in your marriage and in your life and, and the personal issues that you have, when it shows up and it roars and it begins to roar, are you going to put your head in the sand or are you going to stay alert? Are you going to watch out? Because what he's doing is he's just looking to ruin your life. And, and this is what your issues do. When you do not address your issues, they devour you. He, he said, so what I need you to do? I need you to stand firm. I need you to stand firm against him. And I need you to be strong. I need you to get to this place where instead of putting your head in the sand, I need you to stand on what you believe. I need you to stand on what you said, the promises that you made. If you made a commitment to somebody, I need you to stand firm in that commitment. If you made a commitment to God, I need you to get to this place where you stand firm against the enemy. Don't allow the culture... Don't allow the issue, don't allow your friend group to determine what is right in, the, in your life, in, your, in the sight of God. No, I need you to stand firm against the enemy because what the enemy is doing is it's roaring at you and it's trying to get you to drop your head inside of the sand. And what I need you to do instead, I need you to stand firm against him and I need you to check this out. I need you to be strong. But I'm not talking about weightlifting and I'm not talking about all that worldly strong stuff. I need you to be strong in your faith. How do you get strong in your faith? You spend time. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. I need you to get strong in faith. I need you to really understand the weapons that I have for you. I need you to remember that your family of believers all over the world, that they're going through the same kind of suffering, that you're not the only person with issues. That I know a lot of people on Facebook make you believe that they are issue free. But the reality of it is, even the people with all the shots and all the travel and all the little wine glasses and all the stuff that you see, all the little adorable pictures of the family and everything, they have issues too. They're struggling with things beneath the surface that you have no idea that they're going through the same because in this world, this is what Yeshua promises, every single one of us is going to have trouble. Trouble is not absent inside of their lives. What's absent inside of their lives is a clear depiction of the issues that they're going through. But trust me, all of us, all of us have some issues that we have to face. And for those issues, we need to turn to God first. We need to be alert. We need to be watching out. We need to stand firm. We need to be strong in our faith. We need to remember that the same God that saved your uncle and saved your cousin and saved big mama and grandma and who all those people, all those people who had issues that you saw God show up and change their lives, that that same God is able to do the exact same thing inside of your life. Look what he says in verse 10. He says, in his kindness, Elohim, he, listen, Elohim called you. He called you because you were the right person for the job, for the issue that you struggle with, for the thing. People need to see how you conquered that issue, how you handled that line. You have, been, you have your own set of issues that you have to conquer. And the reason why you have those issues is because Elohim, he's called, he's called you to this place to give you everything that you need, everything that you need. What did, what did Yeshua say? In this world, you're going to have trouble, but you can overcome it because I'm with you. I'm inside of you. In this kindness, Elohim, he, he called you to share in his eternal glory by the means of Christ, Yeshua. So listen to this now. After you have suffered a little while. After you've had to deal with the issues, after you've had to go through the thing, after you suffer for a little while, this is what God is going to do. I want you guys to see this. If you address the issue, he will He'll restore you. If you put your head in the sand, you'll be devoured. There will be no restoration. You will, you, your new thing is gone. You're David, leaving out with your tail between your legs. If you, if you don't go and address the issue, don't take it to, to God. If, you, if you're not alert, if you're not watchful, if you're not standing firm, you, you're not going to be restored. You're going to be de devoured. But, but if you will fight the issues in your life, the personal, the relational, the societal issue, God, he, 
He'll restore you. There will be some struggle. There will be some trouble. There is a suffer. There is a, a little while of suffering with an issue. It's not easy. And you may suffer with your issue from time to time, even as you go forward. But God promises that as you address your issues, he will restore you. He will support you. He will give you the strength that you need. And he will, look at this say, look what it says, place you on firm foundation. Your head won't be underground. You won't even be in the sand anymore. You got to see this. God is putting you on firm foundation. No more sand under your feet. No more sand. No more, no more opportunity even to put your head in the sand. Because now all of a sudden, as you address your issues, now you're walking on firm ground. Now you're able to walk around and not always be dipped because it's an amazing thing. As you address your issue, God comes in and restores. As you address your issue, he provides you support. As you address your issue, he strengthens you and then he places you on firm foundation. I want you guys to see this. All power. This is what we have to do. We have to get to this place where we worship a God who, of all power to him. We give it to him. We say, it's all about you. It's not about me. It's not about the things that I did. It's not about the 12-step program because the 12-step program, it will not fix your issues. It's not about the conference that you went through. It's not about the place, the book that you read. I know that some of those books are amazing, right? They give you some things to do. But executing on those things are difficult to do. You cannot do it without the all-sufficient power of Jesus in your life. I don't care. You can try to fight this thing any way you want to fight it. You can ignore it. You can try to take it in your own strength. But the reality of it is we turn to Yeshua. We stay alert. We keep watching out. We stand firm. Amen. And we're strong in our faith. We remember what God has done in our life. And because of that, we keep our head out the sand. And we address every issue before they become major problems in our life. Imagine what David's life would be like had he just addressed the issues. Had he just stepped in when... When he saw in Amnon that he had this issue going on. Surely he saw that Amnon had some kind of lust thing going on. Amnon just didn't take Tamar out of the blue. Amnon probably had a long list of lust issues that weren't addressed. Surely he could have said something to his daughter Tamar and addressed the issue and restored her. Surely he could have said something to Absalom. But instead, he buried his head in the sand. And because of that, the issue, it took his kingdom. So this week... I have a real simple question for you. What is God saying to you about the way you handle your issues? The personal issue. The one you've been struggling with for years, you know, mama struggled with it, daddy struggled with it, uncle struggled with it, auntie. It's been around the family for a long time, those personal issues. And the reality of it is, it's time for that curse, that issue, to be put to bed. But it's going to require you to stop putting your head in the sand. That's just who I am. That's just the family I come from. That's just, that's just how we do it. You know, we, that's just the way we do it. What's God saying to you about the relational issues, about the, 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 the sister, the brother, the cousin? And what is he saying to you about the issues? You're seeing things around you. You're seeing things happening. And instead of addressing the issues, you're trying to be the cool cousin, the cool auntie, the cool uncle. Trying not to cause too much turmoil in your house because... If I just ignore this issue, it'll just go. No, it's not going away. It's going to implode or escalate. One of the two is it's not going away. But what is God saying to you about the societal issues? Things that are happening that are the injustices, the things that are happening around you that you need to be doing something about. God has touched your heart. And he has raised this issue up on the inside of your heart. And what is he saying to you today about the way you handle 
the issues, the trouble, the conflict in your life. Do you have one of these sandbags? How about today be the day when you make the decision to get rid of the sandbag? To turn to God for every issue inside of your life, to be alert, to watch out for what's going on around you, to stand firm, to be strong in faith. Because this is exactly what Jesus did for us. He, he came into this world. And at some point, he gets to the end of his life and the lion starts to roar. The lion is across. This, this lion starts to roar at Yeshua. And instead of him putting his head in the sand, you know what he does? He picks up his cross. He denies himself. And he allows himself to be sacrificed. And because of that, because he trusts God, because he is alert, because he is watchful, because he stands firm in his faith and, and he is strong in his faith, each and every one of us, regardless of what issue we go through, it's already been overcome. The word of God says, Yeshua says, that in this world, we're going to have trouble. There are going to be issues. But if we can be of good heart, if we can focus on him, we can overcome. You can overcome every single issue. There is not an issue. I don't care how long it's been around. It's time for you to act on it. And the power of Yeshua will give you everything that you need to deal with every issue that you have. So this week, I want you guys to make this declaration with me. I will not put my head in the sand when issues are at hand. I want you to say it like you mean it. Now say it like you believe it. I'm believing that as you make that declaration of your life, you are declaring over your life that you're no longer going to allow the issues of your life to continue to control your life. And I'm believing that as you make that declaration of your life, that Yeshua is coming in and he's giving you the power to overcome every single issue that you have. To God be the glory. Amen. Can, can you just imagine it for a second? Imagine a life in which you are not allowing the issues to control you, but you are addressing the issues. Can you see yourself? Can you imagine what God is going to do in your marriage, in your parenting at work? Imagine for a second, because God is doing a new thing inside of your life. Amen. If you're here today, if you're online or in the house, and you have allowed the issues of life to separate, come on deacons when you've allowed the issues of life to separate you from Christ I don't care how far you've been away and how long you've been gone I'm opening this altar up for you today to come back first issue is to put God at the head of your life this deacon this minister will, will bring more people up if needed will pray with you. You can speak. They'll speak into your life. You can come up and ask for specific prayer. If you have never accepted Christ in your life, you want to make this the day. This is how all issue resolution starts with accepting Christ. There's no way around this part of it. If that's you, you've never accepted Christ, never been baptized, want to open the doors of this church, we'll baptize you, have a Holy Ghost party with you, and be there with you to help you to be able to address every single issue that you have. If you are looking for a home, a place where you can get help with issues, a place where you can get help with the problems of life, listen, this is, there's no better home than this home right here. We want to be a part of your life, want to walk through life with you want to help you with your issues and we want to expect for you to help speak into our life with our issues amen to God be the glory 